Hi everyone, let's look at the low time frame bullish and bearish scenario, starting with the most bearish scenario where we're looking for an impulsive structure to the downside, which is then a wave one, two, and then another one, two, followed then by a bigger three to the downside, which is then going to be a wave three of a wave three. So you definitely expect volume to increase and much, much lower prices to come. So the little bit of support over here, yeah, we can get a little bit of support and a range potentially, but you expect more downside in this particular scenario. Now, two things I do want to say. First of all, this yellow wave two over here retraced to the 886, which is a rare target for a wave two and not a common target for a wave two. So this is something to keep in mind and then price moving to the downside over here finally hit the 1.618 which is a minimum target for an extended wave 3 which then is the yellow count over here as these fibs over here are pulled from the high of 2 to the low of 1 to then the high of this wave 2 and then you have the extension targets as you can see the 1.618 is only the first potential extension targets because a wave 3 can extend a lot further down. Now, if we look at this structure of a wave three, we could count it at the moment as a one, two, three, four, and then a wave five to the downside, where inside this final structure to the downside, this can potentially be a one, two, three, maybe four or five, maybe another leg down over here, yet to be seen, of course, because also just below where price action is right now, we do have a couple of confluences for support. So as mentioned yesterday, this area is very, very important. And at the moment, we hit the range point of control of the range that we have been in for a couple of days weeks over here right so we just hit the point of control of that range as you can see very nicely respected but just below that range point of control we also have a weekly naked point of control and a daily naked point of control for some extra support so maybe price wants to go down once more grab the liquidity and then potentially in this particular scenario enter a wave four so if i then again go back to the count we can have a one, two, three, four, maybe wave five ending a little bit lower, but eventually you expect a little bit of a retracement then in this scenario, that being a wave four, FIBS then pulled from the high of wave two to then potentially, let's say the wave four is gonna end here after hitting the weekly naked point of control and the daily naked point of control. Then we put the wave four on our chart and what is very, very nice in this particular scenario is that the 3A2 is exactly at the same level as the daily naked point of control at 28.875. And also the 0 0.5 is very, uh, relatively close to the daily naked point of control over here. So there is a little bit of resistance for price to the upside for then potentially this wave 4 before then continuation to the downside in the yellow wave 5. And if price moves to the downside in a yellow wave 5, we do have some support once again down here with another target box, which is between 27.162 and 26.9k for some interesting support. And that then could finally be the end of the blue wave 3. Then you get a blue wave 4, again a corrective structure before then continuation once again to the downside. So basically with this scenario, what I'm saying is you don't expect a bigger retracement to the upside at the moment. You expect a downside move to continue. One important tip that I do like to say, of course, there's no financial advice whatsoever in all of my videos, but don't try to catch a three is something that I learned in the past, where if this is potentially a wave three to the downside, you don't want to just keep longing, 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 and then stop, 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 you know, loss, 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 loss. Like that's, those are the type of people that always go against the trend sorry, against the trend, against the volume and all that stuff. And that is not usually something you want to do. If you want to uh, go into longs in this particular scenario, make sure you have a plan, have a strategy, entry requ uh, requirements, be very patient, see what you want to see before you enter a trade, right? You want to follow your plan and your strategy that you have built statistics on. So you know exactly that if X, Y, and Z and whatnot is going to happen with price, you enter the trade because the probability of your win is X right that's what you want to know finally i already mentioned uh, the volume a little bit but as uh, you want to see volume increasing at the moment we now see volume decreasing so that could signal at potentially a little bit of an end of the move coming soon for then maybe a little bit of this wave four so a little bit of a retracement coming right with the highest volume being in this wave three over here if we then go to the wxy scenario i had over the past couple of days yeah, I'm not liking this scenario anymore because this structure just went too deep. So we were looking at this to be then a three-wave structure in W, zigzag in X, and then looking for a three-wave structure in a wave Y. But if this is the first impulsive structure in a wave Y, expecting then an A, B, C to the downside, well, 
The most common target for a wave Y is this white box over here between the one and the 1.236 taken from the high to the low to then the high of wave X. And as you can see, price already even moved beyond the 1.236 over here, which only in the first wave is something I don't like to see. If this is the first wave of a wave Y, I prefer to end it somewhere here, you know, as a first wave, whatever, then eventually up and then go down again to get a nice three wave structure. But if this is only wave A, then wave B basically needs to retrace to the 886, like minimum 786, 886, all the way somewhere up here as high as possible for then another move down to at least close relatively nearby the most common target area for a wave Y because the maximum target for a wave Y is a little bit deeper as the maximum target for a wave Y is the 1.618. So that one is sitting at 27.3K, but that is a rare target and not a common target. So that is also something to keep in mind, but that this is just the first wave is something that I don't really like. I will keep it on my chart for now but it is uh, not my, uh, my my favorite scenario at the moment let's say and then yesterday i was looking at basically an empty chart i was looking at the chart over here and i was just thinking okay what am i actually looking at right what am i seeing i just watched uh, 1899 as uh, the series is called if you know that series let me know what you think uh, so we were watching that and uh, afterwards i was watching at the chart for like 10 minutes and I was looking at hey, what other possibilities might there be on the chart over here and then I came up with potentially an expanding diagonal over here so what I'm looking for in this scenario is this tend to be a five wave structure a three five three and then another five right where each uh, wave is bigger than the previous one so wave four is longer than wave two wave three is longer than wave one wave five is longer than wave three and you can also see I have a couple of fib targets here on the chart where um, another requirement is that wave two and four uh, tend to be zigzags and then one, three, five uh, impulsive structures. So wave two retraced to the 0 0.5 Fibonacci, which is a rare target for a wave two in an expanding um, uh, uh, diagonal, but it is still possible, of course. It's more rare, but possible, absolutely. Then we have the most common target for wave three in an expanding diagonal, which has been nicely respected over here where this wave three could be counted as this being some sort of a diagonal in a wave one, one, two, then one, two, three, four, five, four, five, right? So you then have a one, two, uh, and then eventually three, four, five over here, the wick load then being the end of three. Then you have a zigzag in a wave four, retracing to the 886, which is a common target for a wave four in a expanding diagonal. And then you have this being a wave five to the downside, where a common target is between the 1.618 and the two extension, which is compared to wave three. So taken from the high to the low of three to the high of wave four, that is how you then get to this extension target, right? Now, one has to say that usually in diagonal, diagonals it, volume tends to decrease so the more, longer the diagonal continues the slower the volume becomes however with an expanding diagonal it it like it's not as sure as with a contracting diagonal uh, because of the waves getting longer and because the waves are being longer it tends to need a little bit more volume of course to move price for a bigger direction a bigger movement in price right so um, we do see volume increasing which can more be a sign of an impulse to the downside uh, because that's what you want to see with an impulsive structure but with this uh, expanding diagonal I wouldn't say that the volume we see at the moment is a, a no-go per se, right? Even though volume is increasing, as we can see, the price move is also bigger compared to the previous ones. So for now, this scenario, in my opinion, works. We do have then also wave five just going below the trend line over here, which is actually common for contracting diagonals for wave fives maybe a little bit less but then again it's uh, a possibility that we have on the chart right it's just one of the possibilities that we are gonna keep our eye on and see how it uh, develops price can move potentially a little bit lower because if we actually go to the lower time frames to the 15 over here and we zoom in um, well uh, let's actually go to the five Preferably, you eventually want to see some sort of a five wave move to the upside uh, so that it is the beginning of an impulse or a wave A, for example. Yes, yeah, someone could count five waves maybe over here in some sort of a, of a shape, maybe some sort of a diagonal, and then this being an ABC and then this another one 
correction, one correction, moving to the upside. But if I then look at the CVD divergences and I'm on the 15 minute over here, you can see we actually do have some bearish divergences between this low over here and this one here. So price making a lower high, but making a higher high on both of my CVD lines here. And if we go to the five minute, there you can see it even better where we made a lower high, but a higher high and also here a higher high on the CVD, which is bearish where the main target, if this has, if this is going to play out, um, the moment this low is taken over here, this bearish divergence played out. So that is uh, good to know. So yeah, we have to wait and see what price is going to do. That's also the reason why at the moment, I just don't have any particular educational trading setups on the chart uh, based on Elliott Waves and, and all the knowledge because we have, we need a little bit more information, right? So I hope this video was helpful or valuable to you. Uh, please check out the macro and high time frame video if you're interested. And for now, thanks for watching and subscribing and I will see you.